Hi, and welcome to this video. On this video, I'm going to be covering how to use an image to then search across a directory to find similar images. And we're going to be doing this in Python using a library called Deep Image Search. What makes this library particularly great is the fact that we can accomplish this very difficult task in only about five lines of Python code. So if you want to learn how to use an image to search across a directory or directories of images to find similar ones, then this is the video for you. What makes Deep Image Search great is the fact that it wraps around two other libraries for you. The first is TensorFlow, which is a deep learning framework within Python that comes to us from Google. One of the things that it does with the TensorFlow library is it loads up a neural network architecture called VGG16 and loads in pre-trained weights for that architecture from ImageNet. The next step in this process, after the model is loaded with the pre-trained weights in Deep Image Search, is that each image in the directory or directories is fed into this model. What this model does for us is it vectorizes all of our images. In other words, it converts them into raw numerical data at a very concentrated level. Then what happens in Deep Image Search is those vectors are passed along to another library called Annoy. Annoy comes to us from Spotify, and it is very efficient at clustering or finding patterns across different pieces of data. In our case, we're working with numerical data that represents images. The Annoy algorithm it then goes across all of your images and finds patterns, and those patterns indicate similarity. What Deep Image Search does, therefore, is it takes two very powerful libraries, brings them together for you, and allows you to do these very complex tasks in only about five lines of Python code. So if you're interested in how this works, let's jump on over to JupyterLab and take a look at it in practice. If you already have Python installed on your system, then all you have to do to get Deep Image Search up and running is execute pip install Deep Image Search. I don't believe pip is case sensitive, I could be wrong, but make sure that you use a capital D, capital I, and capital S. Once you've installed Deep Image Search, you'll be able to use it. If you're using Linux or Mac, it's going to be a lot simpler to install this library on your system. If you're using a PC, however, you're going to encounter this error right here. This is going to say Microsoft Visual C++ 14.0 is required. To install Microsoft Visual C++, you'll follow the steps on this Stack Overflow post for you. If you find this post a little confusing, just look down here at uh, this answer, which has 65 upvotes, and you'll find that you can follow along pretty easily. If, however, you want these steps broken down a little bit more simply for you, check out my textbook at cltk.pythonhumanities.com and jump over to the installation or chapter one of that textbook, and you'll find how to install it on your system with Windows. Once you've installed everything correctly, you can start using the Deep Image Search library. And let's pop over to our live coding example to see how this entire process is going to work. Now, I want to take a moment and just kind of break down this directory, which again, will all be available on GitHub. The first we're going to look at is data. Data is a collection of images. Now, these are real world images that are in the public domain. They're on the, the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum's website. You can go to there and actually navigate and find all of them. I've selected a few because these represent a real world problem. A lot of these images look like this. They are parts of a diary. Some of these images, however, if we go back to data and we go down to image 51 here, will contain photographs. Let's presume that we've got this directory of all of these different journal pages, and we want to find within them the images of those journal pages that contain photographs. The way in which you'd have to do that in an analog way is kind of peruse the entire directory, but we don't have to do that. We can do everything within Python with deep image search. So the first thing that we're going to do to solve this problem is we're going to have to import it. So what we need to do is we need to say from deep image search, important to keep your capitals correct here, import, and we're going to import the index class, the load data class, and the search image class. Again, make sure that your capitalization here is on point. Capital I for index, L and D and load data, and S and I and search image. Once you execute that, it might take a few minutes for this to all load up. Uh, you're going to be able to actually start working with the deep image search library. Now for this demonstration, I am doing everything on the CPU as I always do. And you're going to notice that my runtime is kind of short. And the reason for this is because I'm working with only a very small set of data, 66 images in total. Let's go ahead and grab those images. So following the documentation in the repo, I'm going to say image underscore list, and that's going to be equal to load 
theta, capital L, capital D. And this class is really going to take a couple different uh, arguments. The first thing we need to say is uh, from folder, and then we need to grab in some data. This is going to take one argument. It's going to be a list. This list should comp uh, con be where your data actually sits. In my case, everything is sitting in one directory. What's nice about a list here is that we can load up multiple directories in case our images are around maybe 10 or 20 directories if we need to grab them from other places. So once we load that up, we've got the image list. Let's take a look at it just to see what it looks like. If you notice, we've got this thing called I am uh, IP uh, Y and B checkpoints. It's important to understand that that's not an image. It's in fact a fragment of or a, a, a component within our checkpoints from Jupyter Lab. So if you are doing this, I would encourage you maybe to consider deleting that little bit from your repo before you start moving forward. And I'm going to do that right now. And you might have to navigate outside of Jupyter Lab to actually see it. And if we load everything up again. We'll notice that everything is now back to the way we'd expect it, with the first five images being the actual JPEGs themselves. Now that we've got this data loaded, it's time for us to actually start doing something with it. And so what we do is we call up the index class. The index class is going to do a lot of things for us in one go. It's going to take one argument, and that's going to be our list of images, which is, again, where to actually find them. We're going to say dot .start, which is going to actually execute the model, which is going to start vectorizing all of our data. And what we're seeing here is metadata and features are already present with a little typo there. I'll make a pull request to have that updated. Do you want to extract again? Enter yes or no. Now we're getting this right now because I have already prepared for this a little demonstration and I've got it loaded up right here. This is going to allow us just to simply override it. I'm going to hit yes and you'll notice that it starts to run. If this is your first time executing everything, at this stage, you might encounter a model download time. This is for the deep image search library to download the weights for VGG16. Once this is done, as you saw, it didn't take too long at all. We're able to then start analyzing the data that we have. At this stage, you'll notice that we have this new directory over here, meta-data-files. Within it, you'll find two things. The first is image data features, which is .pkl. If you're not familiar with this, this is a pickle file. A good way to think about this is a Python version of zip. It's a compressed file that contains all of your different feature data, in our case, the images. And then we have the actual vectors, which is a .ann file. These are the vectors for each of those images and the annoy output of them. And let's see what this looks like in practice. So we've got a couple different op options here. The first thing we can do is we can search image. So I can say search image, and this is going to take no arguments. We're going to say dot get underscore similar underscore images. Now, at this point, we can pass in a couple different arguments. The first one's going to be, let's just say image path. And this is going to be equal to some image path in our data. So we can go image list zero and grab one of those images. And then what we can do is we can say number of images, all lowercase here, is equal to five. And what this is going to do for us is it's going to find the five most similar items to that first item in our set. In this case, the five most similar items are 003, uh, 0037, 0041 on down the list. But this is kind of difficult to visualize right out of the gate. Fortunately, we have another thing that we can do. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this down here. But instead of get similar images, we're instead going to say plot similar images. And again, what we're going to do here is we're going to simply pass one argument, which is going to be the actual image. And we're going to get rid of this number of images. Since we're working within Jupyter Lab, we're able to actually plot these out with matplotlib and see what they all look like. So these are the images that are most similar to that first image in our data set. But remember our key problem. Our initial problem was we wanted to find the images that were most similar to our images that contain photographs. So our goal is to find images that have photographs in them. Let's go ahead and specify a specific file that we want to find. In this case, it's going to be data. And we are going to specify that the file that we want to grab is file, I believe it's 51, which has a photograph. And if we execute this cell, what we're going to have as an output are a whole bunch of uh, journal entries that contain photographs. 
Notice that we don't have any false positives. I have returned a whole bunch of images that are precisely what I want to find. Now, right now, we're only working with 66 images. In my experience, this scales exceptionally well, which means if you have a very particular image that you want to find across a whole directory of maybe 10,000 or 100,000 images, this is a realistic and scalable approach that will work for you. More importantly, you don't have to code out all of these different steps, which can be quite time consuming and cumbersome. And most importantly of all, it doesn't require a detailed knowledge of neural network frameworks such as TensorFlow or clustering algorithms like Annoy. Instead, you can just leverage this library, Deep Image Search, to do everything for you. I hope you found this video at least somewhat interesting and have a, a good understanding about Deep Image Search and how it can be useful for you in your own workflow. As always, thank you so much to all of my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. You help keep this channel afloat and I do appreciate it. If you get a lot out of this video, or this channel as a whole, please do consider supporting it so that I can keep making these videos free for everyone.